In the last video, we were reanalyzing the circuit by doing a source conversion and redrawing the circuit like this. And we were trying now to determine the current through all the resistors using the nodal technique analysis. And we had gotten as far as determining the three different um, current equations at each of the nodes V1, V2, and V3. And we did that, and then we got it down looking like this. We formed this 3 by 3 determinant composed of V1 columns, V2 columns, and V3 columns. And now we want to determine what is the value of voltage 1, voltage 2, and voltage 3. And the first thing we have to do is determine the numerical value of this 3 by 3 determinant. So let's do that. Here we have, expanding it out by minors, we're going to have 13 times this subdeterminant, which would be a 2 by 2 determinant that we determine by covering up the row that 13 appears in and the column to leave us with this 2 by 2 subdeterminant of 19, negative 2, negative 4, 17. Then we go across the top row, and the next number is minus negative 3, so it's plus 3 times this subdeterminant. Again, cover up the row that it appears in, cover up the column, and we have negative 5, negative 5, negative 4, 17. And then moving across, we have minus 6 times this 2 by 2 determinant by covering up the column and row. Again, two negative 5s, 19 and negative 2. Okay, so let's see. Here we have 19 times 17. That's 323 minus 8. This has a value of 315. And here we have negative 85 minus positive 20. This is negative 85. Minus 20 is negative 85 plus negative 20. So this is minus 105. And here we have 10 minus negative 95. That's 10 plus 95, so this is plus 105. So, and this is 315, 315. Okay, so we have 13 times 315, and this is minus 3 times 105, minus 6 times 105, so you have minus 9 times 105, and put it on the calculator. This is 40, 95, minus 900 plus 45, minus 900. 
45. So we have thirty-one fifty. So that's the value of our three by three determinant. So that determinant has a numerical value of three thousand one hundred fifty. Okay, now we can very quickly determine what is voltage V one, V two, and V three. To determine voltage V1, we replace, we're going to make another 3x3 three three determinant, and we do it by replacing this V1 column with these column numbers right here. So V1, that is equal to 80, 0, 0. And then the V2 column and the V3 column stay the same. So you have negative 3, 19, negative 2, negative 6, negative 4, and 17. And this, the value of this 3 by 3 determinant divided by 3150 that is V1 and this will be equal to 80 times this 2 by 2 matrix 19 negative 2 negative 4 17 so we have 80 And then we're going to have moving across plus three times this two by two matrix zero zero negative four seventeen. That's going to have a numerical value of zero because we have seventeen times zero minus four times zero. So nothing there. Let's move across to this number minus six with this submatrix, 0, 0, 19, negative 2, and that has a value of 0, 0 minus 0. So V1 is equal to 80 times this subdeterminant, 2 by 2 determinant, divided by, and we encountered this earlier when we were expanding the minors for this 3 by 3 determinant, and this is 315. So we have V1 equals 80 times 315 divided by 3150. And this goes into here 10 times. So V1 equals 8. So V1 is equal to plus 8 volts. So let's look at our diagram. V1 is plus 8 volts. Let's put that in. Now we have to determine what is the value for the voltage V2 and the voltage V3. And again, very similar procedure. What we do is now to determine V2, we replace the V2 column with the 80, 0, 0 numbers. And the V1 and V3 columns, they stay the same. So we have 80. 0, 0, and 13, negative 5, 
negative 5. And again, as you just saw through previously, when you determine V1, and as you saw in the previous videos, go through that same procedure, and this comes out to equal 2 and 2 thirds volts for V2. So, we can go to our diagram. V2 is 2 and 2 thirds volts. Now for V3. V3, to determine V3, we replace the third column, or the V3 column, with 80, 0, 0, and the V1 column and the V2 column stay the same. The V2 column and negative 3, 19, negative 2, and now for the V3 column, 80, 0, 0, and our denominator always stays the same for V1, V2, and V3. That's why the first step is, for when we have these column of numbers, the V1 column, the V2 column, the V3 column, first thing is determine the numerical value of this 3x3 three three determinant. Okay, and when we do this, go through the same procedures you just saw us do for V1, and as we've done extensively in the previous videos, and this comes out also to equal 2 and 2 thirds volts. So let's go to our diagram. First, we need some room. V3 is also 2 and 2 thirds volts. Okay, now the current across, let's say, this resistor should be zero then, because V3 is at 2 and 2 thirds volts, and V2 is also at 2 and 2 thirds volts. So there's zero voltage across that resistor there, so we can say that I5 equals zero. Now, what about, say, through this resistor right here? Here, this is at a voltage of eight volts, and at this end of it, it's at a voltage of two and two thirds volts. So for this resistor, we have 8 minus 8 thirds volts. Divided by 4 ohms. And let's see, we have 8 minus, so this is going to be 16 thirds divided by 4 ohms. That equals 16 over 12. That's 4 times 4 divided by 4 times 3. So this is 1 and 1 third amp, and this should be flowing downward. Now, we're running out of time, I think. Uh, we can determine a few more, because what we want to do is, we're going to determine the current through all of these resistors, and then compare to what it was when we solved this problem previously, 
with the mesh current approach and see if we get the same answers. So that's what we're striving for right now. And right now we have determined the current through resistor 5 and resistor 4. Now, through this resistor here, again, at the top, 8 volts, at the bottom, potential 2 and 2 thirds volts, just like it was for this one, except this has half the resistance. So, I2, there's two of them here, say I2 upper, that should equal then 2 and 2 thirds amps. And again, going downward. Are we keeping things in focus well enough? Okay. Again, we're talking about this resistor, the same potential difference across it, and this one has half the resistance of this one, so it should have twice the current. So instead of being one and one thirds amps going down, it should be two and two thirds amps. So we have determined right now then the current for here, here, and here. Now let's go down and determine it for these two resistors. So here for let's say I2 lower, that will equal this now is at a voltage of eight thirds volts and that's zero, so we should have eight-thirds volts divided by two. And this comes out to be equal to one and one-third amps, and that's going down. Now, for this resistor, Again, the same potential drop, two and two thirds volts up here, zero down here, except this has half the resistance of this resistor, so it should have twice the current going through it. So the current through the one ohm resistor, that should be equal to two and two thirds amps going down. So right now, we have determined the currents for all of these resistors here that are in the bridge network. Let's compare that to what we determine with the mesh current analysis and see if we get the same answers. And then we still have to be concerned what is happening with this resistor here or equivalently that same resistor is in series with the voltage uh, source. And here we have to be a little bit careful, as we mentioned when we were setting this problem up uh, a couple of videos ago. So anyway, come back, join us in the next video. Let's compare the currents that we have determined with the node analysis through these resistors to what we would get from mesh current analysis, and then also being careful to consider the differences of currents going through the resistor here when it's in series and in here when it's in parallel with that current source. So come back, join us in the next video, and we'll finish off this whole business.